Developers all across the world have been clamoring for years about multiple email attachments for the send mail feature. And it's finally here in FileMaker 17. There's no more need to purchase a plugin for this basic feature for the send mail. You can add as many attachments as you want now. Now what you're looking at is an example file I created to demonstrate multiple FileMaker 17 features. It's essentially a contact manager, not much more. So what we're going to do is use this to demonstrate multiple email attachments, kind of disregard some of the other stuff. So we'll go with the basics and go down to send mail. And when we send mail, we can of course do all the things we normally did, but now when we attach files, we can go ahead and attach multiple files. And you can attach as many as you want. If you don't want one, you simply click on it and it goes away. It's that easy. So I'm going to cancel this. We don't need to send that. You can also write a script with multiple email attachments. And what you need is to have the ability to declare variables. So I actually have two scripts in here. The first one is multiple email attachments too. It sends basically two email attachments. Then there's another one that's unlimited. We'll go over that last because it's more complicated. Now before we go over it, let's go into layout mode and go over here to the right and you'll see there are two global container fields. They're pre-populated with data so that we don't have to go ahead and mess around with it. Just realize there's the contents in there. So if we go into our script workspace again, take a look at it, we'll see that we have dollar sign $path1 is declared as get temporary path because I don't want the user to see these files I tuck them away inside of a hidden folder and every time I quit FileMaker it's going to delete the contents. Then I add on the file name from that field. This is X container one right here. So I use the get container attribute. And then what I do is I export the field contents to path one. Very simple. Just export it right there. Goes into that hidden directory then I do path two. Same idea except that I'm just simply changing this right here as well as the variable name, path2. Now this works great if you have a you know defined number of attachments and you don't need to go any more complicated than this. You just export both values, both containers to two different variables and then you come in here and you attach them to your send mail. You can see it's the same idea, except that when you click Attach Files, it looks a little bit different. What you see is multiple paths in here. So you could actually specify inside the Send Mail script, uh, you know, a, a, an absolute path or a relative path, one that was hard coded. But I've decided to do it with variables, and you see, just simply putting a return between them separates them, just like you'd normally see in the standard specify file dialog. But it's a little bit different now because in the standard specify file dialog attached to other script steps, it looks at the first valid path. It doesn't go any further than that. It doesn't go on to path two if path one is valid. Only if path one was invalid would it go to path two. But in this dialog only, it looks at all the paths here. So I could add in a third one if I wanted to, and it would attach all those. Pretty simple stuff, not hard to do. And when we run this script, it's going to simply attach two of them. So we'll run it right now. We'll save all that stuff. And you see it goes ahead and attaches two different attachments here. Now this one's a little more complicated, the one that's actually attached to the button right here. And it sends all of the values inside this document. So there could be one up to ten. And you'll see why it's limited to ten, but essentially it's unlimited as you'll see for the most part. So if we go in here and look at the unlimited one, we first commit the record, then we go to related record to show all of the items in that portal inside a layout based on that, you know, on the contents of that portal. I go to the first record, all standard stuff, pretty simple. And then I declare a variable dollar sign counter to be dollar sign counter plus one. Simply each time I go ahead and loop it's going to uh, increase itself. Then here's the part that's really tricky if you haven't seen it before. It's really simple once you look at it. I'm going to go ahead and declare variables dynamically or adaptively. And the best way to understand this I think is to go out of here 
and take a look at the data viewer. What I've taken is that formula in there and I've put it into the data viewer. And you can see the result here is that it gives you this. Now one thing you see is it says dollar sign path and dollar sign path here. That's because it goes ahead and doesn't see the dollar sign counter right now because dollar sign counter I've decided to attach it as the value from dollar sign counter but we're not running the script so there's no value in it so it attaches nothing but dollar sign path is actually inside quotes and that's why it just results in it but you can imagine what happens when I go ahead and duplicate this and instead of putting dollar sign counter I put a one or a two there and the same here and we look at that now we see dollar sign path one if I put a two there then I see dollar sign path two so what happens is as the loop increases the dollar sign counter it increases or changes this let variable here which declares a different value here or as many variables as you want essentially so it's completely adaptive which is very cool so it does that each time it loops and then you'll see that I export dollar sign path we'll look up here dollar sign path is what I'm putting this into it so we're actually declaring really each time we do the set variable dollar sign path and then also dollar sign path one or dollar sign path two we're doing two variables at once with this it's pretty tricky stuff and then we go ahead and actually export dollar sign path so we can get that file out of FileMaker and then we go to the next record and keep doing that stuff but we still have dollar sign path one, path two, path three, all in the memory so that when we get down here and we're done looping, we can then send mail to as many paths as we want. You can see right here I put in 10 paths. I can't really make this variable or dynamic. I can simply put in as many paths as I want here and that will suffice. You know, it's going to do up to 10 containers here. But for the most part, it's pretty dynamic and pretty cool what you can do with it. Rather than having to list you know, uh, you know, all those variables like we did back in here. We did variable, you know, one and variable two. I can make it somewhat adaptive, and then you know, come in here and it's not too bad. I can I can put up to a hundred here if I wanted to really, and get almost virtually unlimited sending mails. And let's try it out and see how it works. So you can see right now there's two in here. So if I hit this button here it loops through all the stuff and attaches both those just the same way it would if it was hard coded